Hey YouTube, it's Kimberly. I'm back again for another show and share video. If you're new to my channel, then welcome. And if you're returning, thank you very much for having come back. So for any of you who have followed me before on any other form of social media, either on uh, Tumblr, Instagram, or Facebook, you're gonna be familiar with elements of this project. Um, but for those of you who are not familiar with my work, uh, one of the things that I really enjoy doing is uh, designing and building dolls and particularly I like needle felting so um, this video is not actually going to be on the dolls themselves but rather on one of their accessories but before I jump into showing you that project I do need to give you a little background on the dolls themselves since they are very special little people in my life. Um, so the two dolls that I am specifically speaking of are the Kittles. I'll pop a picture up here. Uh, this particular picture of them I took in order to submit to Art Doll Quarterly um, sometime last year, I believe. Now, unfortunately, the photo uh, itself was rejected by the magazine, but I do love this one because it does kind of look like a bad Sears family photo. And... Um, yeah, there is a bit of an ongoing joke with them in my life that uh, they're the only kids I'm ever gonna have. <laughs> so this does sort of make me smile. Um, but the Kittles, who are they? Uh, their names are uh, Tommy, or Little Hittles, and Kimby. Now, Tommy was the first one that I made, and I made him back in January of 2014. Uh, my mother had just started needle felting at the time and I thought that it was a really cool technique and I wanted to try it so um, I just sort of picked up some of her rovings and her needles and just started poking away and that's what I came up with. Um, second reason for making him, uh, I have touched on my um, depression uh, before here so I'm comfortable talking about it again. Um, but. Uh, you know, as a result of my depression, I'm really not a morning person. It takes me a long time to get up and a long time to put on my people face. So where Tommy comes into that is that I made him in order to sit on top of my alarm clock so that the very first thing that I would see in the morning was um, a nice, bright, smiling face uh, looking back at me. And, uh, you know, mission accomplished. Uh, his design, just to, to touch on that, is based off of, well, an actor that I really like. I do like Tom Hiddleston. Um, but also on the uh, cartoons of a young woman named Carlotta Hernandez. I'm going to uh, link you to her social media down below so that you can check out her illustrations. Um, though most of her illustrations uh, are kind of an older version of this character, she did a few ones of this little fella as a little boy and that's more um, who I base this off of and you know whether he's a true representation of either that character or you know Tom Hiddleston as a child it's really kind of immaterial um, because really what was important to me was the vision of this little character as a little happy-go-lucky character who um, you know, just uh, takes on the world with a big heart and a bright smile. And, you know, that's really what I wanted to be able to do with my day. So that's that's where this little guy came in. Um, so immediately once I made him, uh, he found his way into all of my social media uh, as a very active participant. Uh, I did a little cooking blog. Um, I would also do involve him in some of my crafting. I took photos of him doing some crafts on his own and uh, wrote little stories to go along with them. Um, my mom absolutely adores him, calls him her grand doll. <laughs> Again, probably the closest thing to a grandkid she's ever gonna get. And um, I think one thing that she, she remarked on in uh, his first year was that he's a very solitary boy. He doesn't really have any other dolls to hang around with or do things with and um, thought that probably he suffered for being lonely. And uh, there was a picture that was um, posted around Christmas of his first year. I'm going to put that up right here. Um, 
which I think definitely was strong evidence of the fact that my mother was right. He is a very, very solitary boy. So <laughs> she commissioned me to make another doll and she suggested that this doll should be based off of pictures of me as a child. Now, um, I made Kimby over Christmas of 2014, so in real world years there is a year between these two dolls, but in terms of doll's age, I think he's probably supposed to be between six and seven, she's supposed to be between three and four. So immediately when I posted them on my blog, um, I got some um, direct messages and private messages uh, suggesting how dare I give him a girlfriend. Well. Let's deal with that one right away. No, they are not boyfriend and girlfriend. They are just friends. And in fact, she probably is an antagonist, um, being that much younger and again, being a little impressionable little doodle. Um, thinks everything that he does is amazing, follows him around like a shadow and probably annoys the living heck out of him. So again, that I guess describes the state of their friendship and their relationship. Um, uh, but beyond that, uh, when I got them back to Calgary, uh, I couldn't just put him on the radio all by himself. There was no room for her and thought that perhaps they needed their own place in the, the condo. So um, that brings us to the project that I'm about to share with you, which is their doll bed. Um, I got this doll bed sometime in the middle of 2014. I uh, got it at a local antique shop. I can't remember how much I paid for it, which is probably an indication that I paid way too much and that I actually don't want to admit it to myself. Um, but when it came to me, it came with absolutely no bedding whatsoever. So it was a good long project building everything from the, the mattress, the pillows, the sheets to the quilt. And the quilt itself is probably the craziest project that I've ever undertaken. Uh, it's a 23 inch square miniature and there are 1100 pieces of fabric in it so it definitely qualifies as crafts for the criminally insane. Uh, now that you have that background let's pop this camera off the stand get down on the ground and I'm gonna show you the Kittle stall bed. Alright so this is the little antique doll bed that uh, I picked up for uh, I guess I would have just picked it up for Tommy because Kimby wasn't around at the time that I um, bought it. Um, I truthfully don't know exactly how old this thing is. I'm probably guessing that it might have been like from the, I don't know, 1910s, 1920s. I'm just guessing that because of the style of the spring set that's on this um, uh, this particular um, bed right here. Uh, there is one just like it at my former workplace. You can see that at Heritage Park in the Prince House um, in the children's bedroom. And that room, uh, that room is staged to around 1910, 1915. So guessing that they did their dating of um, the exhibit correctly, that I'm, I'm willing to accept that as a uh, possible way of dating this bed. Um, so as you can see it came without um, a mattress or any sort of um, uh, linens or coverings. I did a little feature, I think it was on Instagram when I posted this, so here's a little picture of Tommy catching me trying to sneak this thing into the house. I um, mean just like every other kid in the world you can't surprise them with anything. So uh, over the next few months I started assembling some fabrics and started building the different components of the bed. So the very first thing that needed to be made was um, a mattress. So in keeping with the, uh, the era that this particular bed belongs to, the mattress that I've made, it's um, supposed to be either like a, a straw tick or a feather tick. And the fabric that I've used on this was something that I had left over in my stash from a project that I did way, way, way long ago for the Markham Museum. Um, I had made some, uh, the beginnings of some interpretation costumes, so this uh, fabric had been purchased in order to do some aprons for them. So ended up making a really lovely little, um, little mattress. And... The next step, of course, was the sheet set for this. 
and this we're going to start with our little fitted sheet here and I found this is part of the I guess it would be heritage quilting solids from fabric land um, my favorite color is purple so I thought oh what better thing to do and I was planning on making a quilt that was going to be all sorts of K-Facet collective fabrics so um, purple is usually a good coordinate for those so there is my little fitted sheet please disregard all of the dust my place is completely and totally lousy with dust um, beyond me not being a good housekeeper uh, we've been dealing with a lot of construction in our area so the dust has been way out of control and um, I'm also with the sheets here I'm a fan of mismatched linens so the big surprise for this is that the uh, the top sheet for him is actually not um, purple. Uh, this fabric right here, again from Fabricland, was from a Paddington Bear collection. I really loved this and thought of using it for um, a sheet for this doll bed because, of course, uh, Little Hiddles being based off of Tom Hiddleston. He's British, so it had a nice little image of Tower Bridge as well as the Houses of Parliament um, on it. So I thought, oh, you know, that's cute. We can work that in. And I also like travel, so, uh, you know, got some dreams and some goals in there. Got some Paris, some Sydney, a uh, nice travel agency. Goodness knows I don't know where that is, but, you know, thought it was fun. Pop that guy on course picture side down so that you know Tommy can see all of the lovely places in his sleep. Now you'll notice of course that the turn back on this I used a piece of K-Facet fabric. I think that one's called Jungle Paisley and again I did some piping on it and the piping uses the purple that was from the fitted sheet and then a little bit of a, a purple ticking uh, fabric there. And that one was given to me by um, a friend and former coworker, Christine. Now, that purple ticking, more of it, um, I needed pillows for this little bed. So I made um, some little purple pillows there. Of course, I had to make some really cute little pillowcases for those adorable little pillows. So you can see the little ticking pillow in there and this of course is our coordinate um, pillowcases that are made out of that Paddington Bear fabric. Now um, the way that they sit on the bed is of course backwards because if you're looking at the uh, north shore of the Thames from the south shore the Houses of Parliament should be to your left and Tower Bridge should be to your right um, but of course I didn't Think of that at the time so they're kind of backwards I have um, because you know I can be a little bit neurotic sometimes thought about unpicking them and re-sewing them but again I just it's been an exercise in patience and letting things go and letting them be what they're gonna be <laughs> and uh, so far I'm proud of myself for not having gone off the deep end and then picked those things in order to reconstruct them so this was what the bed looked like for the longest time um, when there was just Tommy. And when Kimby came along, of course, you know, she's not going to sleep up at the same end of the bed because goodness, what three-year-old and six-year-old could honestly share a bed without killing one another? So I decided in one of those sort of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory kind of moves that she would have her bedding down the other end of the bed. Now would have been kind of weird and not a real world fix if I were to put any of that sort of turn back on this end so I just I don't know I ignored it and didn't do it and you know because she's a little girl and she's a little bit different I decided that the pillows that I were was going to make for her were going to coordinate with his but not exactly match so for her I made the body of the pillow out of the jungle paisley fabric and then use the um, Paddington Bear fabric on the uh, on the edge of the pillows. So that's 
where her pillows go down here. And of course, they're both so short that their feet don't even meet in the center. So that kind of was a good fix for, uh, for the bed. Now, the next thing that I'm going to show you is the quilt. So uh, I'm going to push the bed out of the way for a moment so I can spread out the quilt and show you all the lovely detail. Okay, so this is the uh, quilt that goes on the Kittle's bed. Uh, as I mentioned before, it does have 1,100 pieces in it. Um, I know that because there are 100 individual blocks, um, each measuring two inches square, and that in each of these blocks there are 11 pieces of fabric. Uh, these uh, particular blocks, in order to get them all as uniform as what they look, I used um, a foundation stamp. I don't know if anybody uh, is overly familiar with those as an idea, so I'll um, pop a quick picture up on the screen there. Um, how I came to know about these stamps was that um, my mother and I, in the summer that I started this project, had attended a quilt show called uh, Quilts at the Creek uh, at Black Creek Pioneer Village, and there had been an absolutely stunning quilt there that was a queen-size quilt that had been made with um, the log cabin stamp that's by the same company as this and uh, she had pinned some information as well as a sample block to show exactly how these things were made. So I made it my mission that I was gonna track one of these down and give this technique a shot. Uh, as it turns out, the company that made them is called Thoroughly Modern Minis. Uh, they made them in the early 1990s. I think one of the stamps that I have has um, a copyright date of 1992 on it. Um, so needless to say, they were hard to find. Uh, where I got lucky was that I found uh, an online thrift shop through Etsy that had, I think, about eight of them for sale at the time. So I bought three of them. I bought uh, the corner log cabin stamp, I bought flying geese, and I bought the log cabin stamp. And now since I've completed this project, my mother has also gone ahead and made an absolutely stunning um, queen size quilt using the log cabin stamp. So I'll uh, throw up a picture of that just to give her a little wahoo for an absolutely stellar quilt. Um, now I procrastinate a lot and I lose momentum on a lot of different projects. This was another one of those ones. I think this quilt ended up taking me something stupid like seven months um, to make. I think that the first you know, 20 to 30 blocks went fairly quickly, then I kind of dragged my heels doing the blocks between like the 30th block and around the 70th block, and I think the only reason that it got done was because I had wanted to put it in a uh, quilt show out here, and uh, so in order to do so I really needed to uh, haul my butt and get the last 30 blocks done. And uh, as I was doing so and getting a little bit squirrely from you know, working with all these tiny little pieces, I did uh, feature this one on my blog and I think uh, I teased that the last few blocks of the quilt were actually done by the Kittles while I was at work because they just couldn't wait any longer for the quilt that was going to go on their bed. Um, anything else that I need to tell you about this? Um, uh, again, all of the fabrics in this quilt are somehow related to <laughs> Cape Facet. Um, whether they're Cape Facet Collective fabrics or whether there are some of the fabrics that he designed for, I think he did a, a Paisley line for uh, Liberty of London at one point. Um, there might be some Free Spirit fabrics in there that are unrelated, but uh, all fall into the same color palette and I think ended up um, making for a lovely little quilt. I think there were upwards of 65 to 75 individual fabrics, um, but it ends up looking like a lot more because a lot of the um, prints that I was using were larger prints, so depending on where you cut the piece of um, fabric out of, you know, you either got a darker color or lighter color or brighter color, who knows. Um, so I, I think I do have a photo of the uh, assembly process there that shows all of my different strips sorted out into their different colors, patterns, and values. So I'll toss that one up on the screen for your enjoyment. So um, let's uh, get this guy onto the, the Kittle's bed so that you can see it all together. Okay, so here you can see the, uh, the quilt on the bed all completely made up, um, uh, being modeled by the Kittles themselves. 
Um, now, one thing that I didn't mention previously was that uh, after having exhibited the quilt at Festival of Quilts, I went on to show this quilt at the Chestmere um, uh, Fall Fair, and it ended up winning uh, first prize in its category and bringing home a $25 gift certificate from my sewing room in Calgary, which was a nice added bonus. And completely unexpected, uh, given the, the quality of the work in the category, um, if you're ever in and around Chestermere um, in September, by all means drop by the fair because the the, uh, the quality of the quilts exhibited is just, um, it, it's stellar. They do some really great work out there. So, um, if you've enjoyed this project, um, please let me know down below, uh, leave me a comment. And uh, likewise, if you're either a doll maker or you're into uh, miniature quilts or miniature furniture, um, I'd love to see your work in your projects. So if you've posted anything to your social media, please uh, drop me a link below and I'd love to check out your work. So until next time, thank you very much for having joined me. Um, take care, be well, hope to see you soon. A bientôt. Bye.